NF Fox NFL Sunday, the pregame show that pulls no punches. This team is big and nasty. Then, record-breaking receiver Chris Carter leads the Vikes in an NFC Central battle against Brett Favre and the Packers. The Vikings take on the Packers today at 4 on Fox 5. This is a Fox Sports presentation. Mr. Long, rise and shine, twinkle toes. Up! Get out of those bunks! I am here to turn you pathetic Hollywood parasites into lean, mean sports casting machines. Fit to cover the NFL for Fox. Is that understood? Yes, Sergeant. Yes, Sergeant! Bull feathers, I can't hear you. Sound off like you've got a pair. A vocal cord. Yes, yes, Sergeant! Where are you from anyway, boy? Louisiana, Sergeant! Louisiana? Only two good things ever came out of Louisiana. Jambalaya and one great quarterback. Yes, Sergeant! Burt Jones of the old Baltimore Colts. Yes, Sergeant! What is our primary mission today? Rams 49ers, sir! Push-ups make me feel good. Get on your face and give me 25. I haven't been yelled at this much since my rookie year in Pittsburgh. Tell me, this guy's nuts. He's crazy. He's a lunatic. What are you smiling at, boy? You make me want to puke. You are out of shape. You are weak. Look at you! You have gone to sea! You wouldn't last five minutes on my team! Only one thing makes me think you might possibly be redeemable! What's that, Sarge? Your haircut! Where do you get it done at, anyway? Hollywood, Sarge. Just call me Bob. You wouldn't mind sharing the location of that little barbershop in Hollywood with the old Sarge now? Not at all, not at all. Week number eight to the NFL. Hey, don't whine, just do the math. That means twice the hitting, twice the fun. <laughs> it's the NFL on Fox. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has entered the building. But don't be cruel to the king. The Niners D is number one in the NFC, and they're shaking, baby. The Rams have found a new home, and Mr. Miller loves throwing out that welcome mat, while Bruce is cozy in the end zone. For the Bird Boys, Mr. Metcalf burns you from all over the place. And for the Bay Boys, the Bucks like to collect them piggies. And there's no time like winning in over. The Saints have the most sacks in the NFC, and they have bagged a big one. The Dolphins are their first win. Meanwhile, the Panthers are the kings of the jungle. The streak is one in a row after winning their first. These days, Detroit's got great reception, Harriman, and more on a record-setting pace. Meanwhile, the Redskins are looking mighty classic. An A-list of Allen and Ellard. When the Vikings need six, they just calculate the numbers for a big-time win with Chris. In the pack, their D lead is seen black. Mr. Farr leaves you feeling blue. <laughs> All right, you mealy mouth wimps, Ted Hutt. For our half a squadron, we call Fox NFL Sunday. Yes, sir. It's week number eight in the NFL, and the stage is set for some crucial battles for divisional leads. The Niners see if Elvis really is the king as they try to catch the surprising leaders of the West, the St. Louis Rams, 
while the Buccaneers try to hold on to the top spot in the NFC Central. And hello everyone, I'm James Brown and welcome to Fox NFL Sunday. Another action-packed day coming your way in the league and here to help me set it all up, my partners Terry Howie and Jimmy Sargent. Oh, oh. Hey, I would love to be the sergeant and let him be my buck private, you know? Hey, but does he realize how hard it is to do push-ups with a hand on your back? Can you believe that? <laughs> hey, you know, the, the country can rest well knowing that he and I are serving the country, protecting oh, yeah. this country. I did 61 arm push-ups because I what? have a bad wrist. He, he had to use two hands. He couldn't do it one. I did 60. Rocky, 60. Rocky Bradshaw. Uh, and he's a prevaricator. Now. And don't we all know that <laughs> extremely well. And we'll hear more of that talk a little bit later as well. All right, folks, it's now time to check out what's happening around the NFL. Buddy Ryan could be losing more than a title. Now, we hear Arizona owner Bill Bidwell is looking to hire a new general manager for next season. And respected Chargers director of player personnel, Billy Devaney, is interested. Ryan Lee currently holds the title of coach and general manager. Elsewhere, the number one proposed site for a new L.A. football stadium is on Veterans Administration land near the UCLA campus. Now, the land is prime real estate, and the issue regarding the location is politically sensitive. UCLA's influence is also a factor because it would share the facility. Preliminary discussions have included U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer. Detroit coach Wayne Fonts has apparently run out of eight of his nine lives. Now, if Fonts, now two and four, doesn't win seven of his last ten games and make the playoffs, he'll be removed as head coach. Vikings assistant coach Tony Dungy heads a preliminary list of candidates. All right, Miami quarterback Dan Marino will miss his second straight start today, but the big news with the future Hall of Famer is that contract negotiations have stalled, and it appears that a deal which would make him the highest-paid player in league history won't be done until next season. Likewise, the Falcons this week withdrew a $5 million per year offer to their quarterback, Jeff George. All right, time now for our Fox Watch. And to start things off, we send you out to Bush Stadium in St. Louis for the battle between the 49ers and the Rams. Handling the play-by-play -play will be our own Pat Summerall. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, JB. And the Rams have lost to the 49ers nine straight times. That obviously is a streak they'd like to bring to an end. The 49ers big problem of course is with the, it will be the absence of Steve Young their starting quarterback who had a rough day against Indianapolis last week that was the first hit Young did come back to action after that one and this is the one that put him out they say for four weeks but Steve Young says maybe only one week George Seifert says he won't put him back in until the doctors say so there is also another factor as far as the 49ers are concerned. They've made some changes up front. This was last week against Indianapolis. Then today, Jesse Cipolo goes back to center. He has new company on either side of him, new guards for the 49ers. So we'll be watching that. Right now, let's send you to Joe Buck in Tampa. All right, Pat, thank you very much. I hope they're treating you all right in St. Louis. They're treating us great here in Tampa, Florida. Beautiful day, 70s, sunny, and we should have a good game. Tampa Bay and Atlanta. You know, Atlanta comes into this game with the worst rated pass defense in the NFL. Because of that, they start two new cornerbacks, Darnell Walker and Anthony Phillips. So look for a big day, maybe a breakout day for Alvin Harper, the big 6-4 receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He comes in with only 15 receptions to date. Meanwhile, it is a beautiful day. As I mentioned, remember this about Atlanta. They are 4-2, but they have yet to beat a team with a winning record. Should be a good battle here. How about over in Carolina? Let's send you there in Tom Brenneman. All right, Joe, thank you very much. Beautiful day as well here at Clemson, South Carolina. The Saints getting together with the Panthers. Now, the first year of any franchise, things are going to be a little crazy. But how about the situation here for the Carolina Panthers? They're based out of Charlotte. They train down in Rock Hill, South Carolina all week. Then they go through Spartanburg, Greenville. The game is in Clemson, South Carolina. The visiting team flies into Charlotte. They drive through both cities and finally arrive in Clemson. Not too bad if you're a fan, however, you jump on the Panther Prowler out of Charlotte, North Carolina, ride the train, enjoy some food, and realize as you pass the stadium, which will open next year, that you won't have to make this kind of trip any longer. Let's like one more trip up to Washington, D.C., where Kevin Harlan is standing by. Tom, terrific day here, 65 degrees and sunny skies, the Lions and the Washington Redskins. The Redskins have beaten the Lions 16 consecutive times, dating all the way back to 1968. And if they want to make it 17 in a row, they'll have to do it with the revamped offensive line that is yet to start the same group three weeks in a row. Joe Pett replacing Jim Lachey. Vernis Smith replacing Trey Johnson. And once again, some bargain basement help to replace a millionaire top draft pick. As for practice squad player, Leslie Shepard will start for the injured Michael Westbrook. For the Lions on their defensive line. 
Robert Forche, sick all week, could start, but we expect a lot of Shane Bonham at the tackle. And third down pass rusher Antonio London tested his ankle earlier this morning after missing practice all week. He will be a game-time decision. Great day in RFK. The Lions and Skins right now back to Hollywood, and here is James Brown. All right, Kevin, and it looks like a great day there, and it should be a nice matchup later on today on Fox when some of you will see the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Green Bay Packers at, of course, in the Battle of the Black and Blue. And as we come back inside of Studio 7, Jimmy, uh, now, although it won't happen today, Green Bay's offense next week should take a quantum leap up with holdout tight end Keith Jackson finally in uniform. Yeah, JB, and Keith Jackson's going to be purely a rent a player for this year. Last year of his contract, He'll fulfill his contract, he'll catch a lot of passes, learn the West Coast offense, and then he's going to pick a team in the offseason and sign for a bundle of money. Now, the positive you know, for the Packers is that he can be fabulous in this offense. I talked to Bernie Kosar, who played with him at Miami last year, and he said that he is the best there is in the league at reading coverages, and he could lead the league for reception by a tight end in this offense. Yeah, one of the reasons why Minnesota's had so much success versus Green Bay is Mike Holmgren has been very conservative today he will open it up they have worked on an array of plays flea flickers reverses going the ball downfield to the big receivers and i'll tell you what they feel a heck of a lot better facing john randall versus john randall and henry thomas chris carter the best red zone receiver in the nfl will move around today he's going from his normal slot position on third down when green blade plays man defense and will move out wide to try to match up on their rookie corner you know you'll find this hard to believe but brett farber's yet to throw for 200 yards against uh, Minnesota has and they haven't done it also when you look at Brett Favre every time they've played Minnesota their offense has always given up a touchdown so they've always had problems offensively make it even worse today Earl Dotson at right tackle has a pull pull calf muscle and fuller at left corner is the one guy if you talk about being aggressive Howie that's who Brett Favre will go after all right let's make a quick switch from football and talk a little baseball right quick and you know even with all the criticism of baseball's new postseason format which added another round of playoffs the two best teams during the regular season still made it to the World Series. That hasn't happened since 1986 when the Mets beat the Red Sox. This year, it's Cleveland and Atlanta. And in Atlanta last night, the postseason perfect. Oral Hirschheiser trying to get a first pitch jump on Fred McGriff with the fast. But McGriff says, uh-uh, powers a home run. That tied the game at one. Then three-time Cy Young Award winner Greg Maddox. Take a look. He gets the call on the corner. That in the fifth and here in the ninth. He gets Carlos Byer to pop it up. Chipper Jones grabs it for the final out. Atlanta takes a one game to none lead. Game two coming up tonight. All right, folks, and we're just getting started on Fox NFL Sunday, so let's check out what's on tap for today's show. On tap! Today on Fox NFL Sunday. You see the rocket and even the missile. Now, introducing the NFL's newest artillery, Atlanta's Eric Metcalf. They call him the weapon. His destination, the end zone. Metcalf left the dog days behind in Cleveland. Now he's the big shot of the Falcons' run and shoot. Fox's Pam Oliver fires away at the NFL's reception leader. And last season, the Rams' offense was a bust. Two yards and a cloud of dust. Now, the Rams' latest splash is a dude with Flash. His name is Bruce, and he's on the loose. Our resident poet, Edgar Allan Bradshaw, scribes his take on Sir Isaac of the Rams. And he tells us why Bruce and Miller are the most welcome duo to hit the Gateway City since Lewis and Clark. Then, attention ladies and wives, Howie's going to show us how to strip. Oh. I mean, uh, Howie and Jimmy are going to take us to Fox Field and show us how to strip the ball from an offensive player. <laughs> coming up, coming at you, only on Fox NFL Sunday. The NFL. Check it out! The Colts saddle up and ride out west to battle the Raiders. Indy's riding a three-game win streak, and a win today would be their hottest start since 77. That's when Tony Monero had the fever, and Vince Evans was first called to the big dance. Vince will be on the dance floor today as Haas rates his routine from the sidelines. The Oilers look to head the Bears off at the pass. Houston's D against the aerial attack is third in the AFC. But Chicago has the pay-to-see sunshine bond. Kramer hits Conway, and they get down to scoring. The Dolphins swim upstream to New York. Without Dan, Miami had to settle for 368 yards from Bernie. Such a deal. When New Yorkers say the Jets, they mean just end the season. 
It'll be raining cats and dogs as the Jags head to the pound. Jacksonville's miracle run ended at two, but one more win and it's a record tying season. Then he's getting confused with Slim Pickens. He's thrown 168 passes without an INT. It's a West Coast party as the Seahawks host the Bolts. Someone say party? No problem. The Chargers will bring the M&Ms. Means is the AFC's number one rusher, and Martin's the AFC's top receiver. While for Seattle, it was a bittersweet goodbye to the Mariner season. Seahawk fans aren't that fortunate. The Chiefs' concern is controlling Agent Elway and the chaos at Mile High. The Broncos bucked the odds and manhandled the Raiders. The AFC's number one offense has rolled in its last two, 64 to three. But Bono's beginning to find what he's looking for. He's connected for 14 touchdown passes, which is top in the AFC. All right, Indianapolis at Oakland, and Howie, the ageless wonder. Vince Evans, of course, will be starting for Oakland. Should we expect any changes? Well, they're going to have to make some changes. They're down three offensive linemen. Jeff Hostetler's out. Vince, obviously, Albert Lewis is down. Fresh off that disaster at that ski resort they call Mile High Stadium. Only thing you should be doing there is skiing. I'll tell you, Vince said earlier in the week he had problems timing up, getting in sync with the receivers. But as the week went on, as it went by, he, he felt more in sync with the receivers. Expect a lot of athleticism out of Vince, a great runner, and look for him to go down the field. He has a cannon, even at 40 years old. Yeah, I mean, that's 40. <laughs> 40 years old? Athleticism? Where do you get these Tell words? Him. Who cares? The guy, He's 40 years old. The guy is a machine. Ah, uh, machine, my heine. I'm telling you what, the machine's coming in from the Colts, man. That's the machine. And this team, when you travel on the road, they have to beat the Raiders today because it, the Raiders were the hottest football team in the National Football League in the AFC prior to that debacle or whatever you call that, however you say that, up in Denver. If I come into the see I look at that game, I say, I throw myself 40, 50 passes today because these boys are out of shape, these Raiders. But that's not their style of football, the Colts. They got to run it with ball, throw it with hard ball, and the Colts pull it off today. Hey, I'm a prophet today. It's Sunday. <laughs> the Raiders hope Jim Harbaugh throws oh. the ball 50 times. Jimmy, you know, I no. really add a lot of different words to my vocabulary whenever I, whenever I listen to this guy. I may play again. You never can tell. Hey, we know you're going to coach. <laughs> All right, folks, there's a lot more to come in today's show he's going to coach. Huh? We'll take a look at one of the NFL's most exciting players, Atlanta's Eric Metcalf. And speaking of excitement, it doesn't get any more exciting than the Rams' D and special teams. Also, Howie and Jimmy will show us the art of stripping the football, which brings to mind another art, poetry. The Rams' wide receiver Isaac Bruce is poetry in motion, and he shares some of his verse with us. Hey, Bradshaw, don't worry about any marketing ploy. For Chris and I, just winning provides enough joy. Bruce is currently second in the NFL with 660 yards receiving. Today, he goes against another pretty good receiver by the name of, oh yeah, Jerry Rice. Back with more in a moment. Uh, and nobody beats the Wiz Total Entertainment Centers. With 25%. And welcome back to Hollywood, everyone. The San Francisco 49ers are in St. Louis today to battle the Rams for first place in the NFC West. Now, very few of us would have predicted the Niners would be entering this contest one game behind the Rams, but it's true. Now, everyone is quite aware that Jerry Rice has done quite well with his accomplishments, but the Rams think they've got a superstar receiver of their own. His name is Isaac Bruce, and along with Chris Miller, this duo is lighting up the league. Now, Terry, I know you've been a part of some great combinations. You've seen others. This combination is making some noise as well. Isaac Bruce is going to be looking across the field today, and there'll be a guy named Jerry Rice, the guy very well that he could be taking his place as the greatest receiver in the National Football League. A little poetry, please. Great hands, it says, of Isaac Bruce in the Rams media guide. And it's true, since he has nothing to hide. Great hands. Vikings will not allow that to happen. And one of the keys to the right tackle is an injured all of a sudden changes because then they're forced to keep a tight end in or a back end which only sends four out into their passing attack which hurts them. Don't you know they wish they had Keith Jackson in the lineup today? 
you know, he just had he's had a couple of practices. He's not ready to play today. He's about five pounds over right now. He looks good, though, they said. All week he looked good in practice. You know, as we get ready to head out of here, you guys really like the West Coast offense, right? I mean, well executed, <laughs> yeah. quarterbacks flourish in that system the whole nine yards. Well, I, I think it's it's good for all quarterbacks. I think if, if you've got a Troy Aikman or a Terry Bradshaw, you can throw it down the field because they've got, got that kind of accuracy. But I think, you know, really, if you've got an average quarterback, he can play in the West Coast offense because it's only so a five sensitive. or six yard round. He's so sensitive. Right I know now. he is sensitive. <laughs> I, I, I do agree with you. You know, right. I do agree with you on that point. It is a very safe offense to run. Four boring, but average quarterbacks, right? Very average. Very average. All right, <laughs> folks, once again, later today, you will see the black and blue battle between the Vikings and the Packers. That'll be coming your way from Green Bay. We will see you later on right here on Fox. <laughs> You're watching the NFL on Fox.